Hey everybody, welcome to the objective portion of our Writing Great PHCRs lecture series. This is video two of four as we move through uh, the various pieces of the SOAP format. So let's get started. So what is objective information? Well, when it comes to writing a PHCR, objective info are the things that you see and do. They're the things that you observe based upon measurable facts. And if you're confused a little bit, don't worry, we're going to explain uh, everything a little bit further and give you some answers to your questions. So what should you include in the objective portion of your charts? Well, uh, state where you arrived. Was it a home? Was it a business? Was it clean? Was, it, was there things strewn about? And you got to describe that scene. Uh, as a chart reviewer, I'm always looking for people to paint a good picture so that I can picture myself in their shoes in front of the patient. And it's okay to include lots of detail about the scene and where you showed up. I obviously want to include details about the patient. And go ahead and include details of what you saw as you first approached them. Did the patient track you as you entered the room? Uh, were they conscious? You know, that the things that you first notice as you walk in to treat the patient. What's their mental status? Do a head to toe, you obviously did a head to toe exam, so document each piece of that. Go through any EKG findings that were abnormal, or if they were, uh, if the findings were normal, document that as well. Where'd you take the patient? We gotta obviously document that we took the patient to an appropriate facility, and how did you get them there? Did you go lights and sirens? Did you go just a simple drive up? Document that stuff. And then also we want to make sure that we document who we left the patient with. And that's just typical, uh, you know, continuing care um, for our patients. So let's look at an example. I'm going to read through this chart uh, that has been written and uh, we'll go through each piece of it. So Medic 5 arrived to a well-kept private home off Northwest Main Street to find an adult male complaining of chest pain. Patient is found sitting in a recliner just inside the front door in what appears to be a family room. Patient's wife and daughter are on scene and tending to the patient on our arrival. Patient tracks EMS personnel as we approach. Once at the patient's side, we find an adult male whose appearance is consistent with stated age. Patient appears to be in moderate distress due to reported pain in his chest. Patient is conscious, alert, and oriented times four to person, place, time, and event, and answers all questions appropriately. So here you can see we've described the scene, we described what we walked up to, and we also talked about what the patient was doing when we walked into the house and how we found him and who was tending to him. So now let's move on to the physical exam. Airway, open and patent. Patient is able to speak in full sentences and swallow with no difficulty. Breathing, clear and equal bilateral breath sounds. No abnormalities were auscultated during our time with the patient. Circulation, strong and irregular radial pulses. Skin, warm, pale, and diaphoretic. EKG, 12 lead shows atrial fibrillation with no acute issues. Head, eyes, ears, nose, and throat, or H-E-E-N-T. Uh, pearl, or pupils equal, round, and responsive to light. No secretion seen coming from the eyes, ears, nose, or mouth. Neck, trachea is midline, no JVD, no accessory muscle use. Chest, equal rise and fall seen with inspiration and expiration. Abdominal. Soft and non-tender in all four quadrants. Pelvis, stable and intact. Patient is able to stand and walk three steps to the gurney with no difficulties. Extremities, moves all extremities times four. CMS times four. Circulation, motor sensory. And the patient is transported to, is transported code one to main medical center ED for eval of chest pain. Patient is left with ED staff after verbal report is given to RNs and MD. Patient is left with bed rails up. So notice how each part of the physical exam got its own line. That's really, really important. From a readability standpoint, it makes things much easier to uh, see each piece of the, com of the physical exam components. And then we, we document where we took the patient. We document who we left them with and how we left them. And that's all really important stuff. So watch the patient interaction video again, and then complete the objective portion of your chart. At the end, compare your chart to ours, 
and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you at the third and fourth videos. Oh, Ma'am, my name's Dan. I'm with the ambulance. What seems to be the problem today? My chest just feels really tight. Okay, and it seems like you're having some difficulty breathing, is that right? Yeah. Okay. So her chief complaint is, again, difficulty breathing. So the first thing I'm going to do is move through my ABCs. Uh, a, airway. Uh, I, as I listen to her, can I hear air moving through just fine? Do I hear strider or anything like that? She is having difficulty breathing. Okay. But she is moving good air. Okay, so she's moving air well enough. Uh, so breathing, um, I would assess a respiratory rate um, either with a stethoscope or by standing air watching and counting. What what is her respiratory rate? She's breathing rate? at 24 times per minute. Okay. So uh, along with the breathing, I also want to listen to lung sounds. So can you take a couple of deep breaths for me? All right. Last deep breath. Okay, what are my lung sounds? You have wheezes in all fields. All right, uh, based on that, I'm going to go ahead and put my patient on high flow oxygen right now. Um, I'm gonna use a non rebreather and go at 15 liters per minute. You can verbalize putting the oxygen on the patient. Okay. Uh, so after breathing, we're gonna move on to circulation. First, I'll check a pulse. What pulse is my pulse rate? Pulse is present and it's at 96 beats per minute. Okay. Uh, do, I, do I note any major bleeding? No major bleeding. Okay. And then uh, moving on to skin. Uh, skin color looks pale. Um, do I note any cyanosis anywhere? No cyanosis. Okay. And uh, as I feel it, does she feel warm? Does she feel cold? Normal temperature. Okay. And do I notice, uh, is her skin um, wet? Is she sweating? Anything like that? No. Normal. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and make this a priority patient. Um, we'll try and transport her as quickly as possible. Uh, so next I'll move on to my, uh, my OPQRST. So ma'am, how long ago did this start? About an hour ago. Okay. And what were you doing when this started? What provoked this? I was just watching TV. Okay. Just watching TV. Um, and can you describe the feeling for me? Yeah. It just feels really tight in my chest. Okay. And on a scale of one to 10, zero being not difficult to breathe, 10 being I can't breathe at all, where would you rate this? I'd say about an eight. About an eight, okay. And again, how long has this been going on for? For an hour. Okay. So, uh, and then have, after I've got my OPQRST done, I'll move on to my sample and try and get a little bit more information. So, um, do you have any allergies? Yeah, I'm allergic to penicillin. So you're allergic to penicillin. Are you in an, on any medications currently? Albuterol. You take the albuterol, okay. And uh, past medical history? Asthma. Okay. You have, oh, so that's probably what the albuterol is for. Um, what was the last thing that you took uh, as far as food, last oral intake? I had breakfast this morning. Okay. Yeah. All right. And events leading up to this, what, what were you doing again that caused this? I was just watching TV. Just sitting there watching TV. All right. So uh, next I would move on to my secondary assessment. Um, for this patient, I really want to listen to one sounds again and reassess that. So I'll listen again. Have my lung sounds changed at all with the oxygen? No, they're still wheezy. Okay. Has my patient's ability to breathe, does she feel a little bit better with the oxygen? She is breathing easier with the oxygen. Okay. Awesome. So after my secondary assessment, I would obtain a baseline set of vitals. So first I would check out, acquire a pulse rate. Her pulse is 90 beats per minute. 90 beats per minute. Okay. And what's her respiratory rate now? As her respiratory I rate is 20 breaths per minute. 20 breaths per minute. Okay. And lastly, I would get a blood pressure. What is her blood pressure? Her blood pressure was 112 over 70. Okay.